Howdy friends, how are y'all doing? My name is August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and it's finally the start of another weekly reading vlog. <laughs> I haven't filmed a vlog in like a month. Every weekend I try to film a vlog and then it fails because I have not been reading and it breaks my heart. Um, but today is April 15th. Today was my last day at my part-time job. I've actually been working in office for the past three weeks. Um, if you've been here a while, you might know that I work remotely. But I've been training the past three weeks, so my schedule has been different. It's been busier. So uh, hence, I'm dressed up. It's my last day. <laughs> um, and I'm done. I'm officially done with my part-time job now and I am going into full-time self-employment. It's strange, it's weird. I, it's not gonna hit me until next week, but tomorrow is my birthday. I planned leaving my part-time job right before my birthday to fully celebrate starting a new year of my life. I'm turning 27. I thought now more than ever, it's the best time to start a vlog because I'm actually gonna have way more time to myself and to read and to do things I enjoy and taking care of myself because I haven't been for many years. <laughs> I'm excited to like learn how to relax. That's something that I struggle with a lot is like just knowing how to relax and reading has been a relaxation but this past month has been wild. I go through waves of like really really busy seasons with my job so it's hard. But I'm really excited I'm done with my job. Um, I'm in the middle of a book right now that I'm absolutely loving. I started reading it March 31st and I haven't finished it yet and that is The Idiot by Leif Batchiman. Uh, if you saw my April TBR video, which I'll link down below, this was the book that I was so excited to get to and would be the first book that I read in April. It's now the middle of April. Haven't finished it. I started it March 31st. So let's quickly talk about some books and then I'm going to take you all along with me to my birthday tomorrow. So The Idiot, we're going to be finishing this. It has to be done by the end of this reading vlog. Loving this. This follows a girl named Celine. She's probably like 17 or 18 years old and she's a freshman at Harvard. And it's just a bunch of like vignettes of her experience at Harvard. She's an art student, but she wants to be a writer. And it's about her like m making all these friends, her roommates. It's almost like tiny little vignettes of all the things she does and sees. And I am enamored with this book. I love it. I love it so much. I just found out a sequel is being made um, and written and it's gonna be published next month in May, I believe. So that's awesome. I'm I'm loving this. I can't express how much I'm loving this. Like it's, it's almost like aimless and pointless, but it's just following Celine's life and her experiences as a college student and all of the bizarre things that happen in university and the way her mind works and all the classes she's taking and all of the knowledge. I feel like I'm learning alongside Celine and I'm gaining so much information and it's really, really cool. So absolutely loving this. The part that I'm at in this, um, cause I am 300 pages in, so I only have 120 more pages to go. The part I'm at right now is Celine is in Hungary and she's traveling there to teach students English over like the summer. So that's where we're at. She has also, this takes place in 1995 and she has had a very interesting relationship with a man named Ivan who's a few years older than her and they only have communicated like through email and email is this really new form of communication so there's a lot of like confusion um they talk via email but in person they're both like really kind of reserved and don't really express their feelings to each other and it's really interesting to see that happening in the early 90s and how confusing that relationship definitely would be because it's even confusing now you can like communicate with somebody but when you see each other in person it's diff it's a different vibe um so absolutely loving this we're gonna finish it but then a long time ago now probably almost a month ago i picked up a manga that has just been sitting on my nightstand for yeah like a month and i can't wait to read it and i want to read it um either today or tomorrow to celebrate my birthday and it is crisis girls story and art by hiroki yoshikawa this is the cutest thing i have ever seen in my life i want to eat this look at those colors it is so stunning <laughs> it's so cute i found it in the bargain section of barnes and noble it says killer penguins nefarious chihuahuas and those who would dare put chocolate cakes in peril are bound to meet their match when the world's cutest necromancer is on the scene we're gonna read crisis girls this is volume one and i can't wait to read a sweet cute adorable manga it just looks adorable so those are the two books that we're gonna finish this finally i've been reading it for three weeks 
start and finish a manga and then hopefully I can start another book because I have so many books on my April TBR that I really really thought I would get to and it, it hasn't happened and that's okay but I just want to get back into the reading mood. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you all are doing really, really well. I know it's been a while. I have really genuinely missed filming vlogs. It just stinks when I don't have like reading content to share, then the vlogs honestly do feel pointless. Let's hop into it and have a wonderful weekend. We are deserving of relaxation and being nice to ourselves and especially after chaotic weeks and months and year, honestly. It feels good to just like be where I'm at right now. Um, and reading awesome, awesome, awesome books that are pink, favorite color, gotta celebrate that. So cheers to 27. Thank you for being here. You all are the best alongside Winston. <laughs> you just look so angry. So yeah, we're happy you're here. Thank you for being here, friends. We love you and we'll check in with you soon. Okay, <laughs> bye. Questions and answers about books. Just call me. It is. It's not here. Your book. Is your book in college?
it's my birthday! <laughs> it's April 16th, it's my 27th birthday, it's been a really good day. I am literally vibing with this outfit, um, loving it. Yeah, started the day off with some reading and then my partner and I went out to brunch and it was really nice. My favorite brunch spot, I only ever really go there like on my birthday, so it was really nice. Um, it's weird, my birthday is actually on a Saturday this year, so like places were really, really busy. But then we went to three different like antique stores. They were all kind of connected in this like giant warehouse. And it was our first time there and it was amazing but it was really overwhelming because there was so much to look at that my eyes were kind of glazing over um but it was amazing and i got some stuff and i wanted to share it quickly also my space heater is on because it's absolutely freezing outside today so if you hear background noise i just apologize there's a lot going on but i need the space heater on today so at the first spot i did find a few books and at that vintage store uh, there was a copy of Snow by Betsy Howie, which is my favorite book of all time, and I can't believe I saw it there. I hardly ever see that book ever anywhere. It, um, I feel like it might even have limited copies, so someone should pick that up. Anyway, the first book I found is called Light uh, by M. John Harrison. It's just like really cool. The cat is what got me on the cover, but it says beyond science, beyond reason, beyond your wildest imagination. And it's a science fiction book, but it sounds so up my alley where it takes place in London and it follows this character named Michael and he's a serial killer on the run from an entity that drives him to kill. He is seeking escape in a future that doesn't yet exist, a quantum world that he and his physicist partner hope to access through a breach of time and space itself. And then it just goes on, it says, haunting them all through this maze of menace and mystery is the shadowy presence of the Shrounder, and three enigmatic clues left on the barren surface of an asteroid under an ocean of light known as the Kefahuchi Tract a deserted spaceship, a pair of bone dice, and a human skeleton. It sounds so bizarre and so up my alley. I don't read a lot of science fiction, but it just gave me Radiance by Catherine M. Volante vibes, which is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, but just in like, yeah, this more surreal, but also science fiction and really bizarre and weird. And that's like so up my alley and it has these cool deckled edges. Uh, let's see when this was published, because I had never heard of it. It was published in 2002. So that's light. I'm really excited for this one. I feel like it's gonna be really fun. But yeah, it just gave me Radiance by Catherine and Valente vibes, which I love. I'm always looking for that kind of like space, but not super sci-fi, not like Ender's Game, but just like sci-fi, mortality, quantum physics. Really fascinates me. So that's that book. Then I got another book. Uh, it first started out as like a, wow, this cover is totally messed up. And then I started reading the plot description and the first page and I was like, yeah, this is my cup of tea. You're coming home with me. And that is Dog Eaters. <laughs> Such a morbid cover um, by Jessica Hagedorn. Hag um, and it is a surrealist novel from Manila. So it takes place in the Philippines and it follows a wildly disparate group of characters, becomes caught in the spiral of events culminating in a beauty pageant, a film festival, and an assassination. In the center of this maelstrom is Rio, a feisty schoolgirl who will grow up to live in America and look back with longing on the land of her youth. But it opens up like very summery. Um, the first part is called Coconut Palace and uh, takes place in 1956 and it talks about the air-conditioned darkness of the Avenue Theater, smells of flowery pomade, sugary chocolate, cigarette smoke, and sweat. It talks about technicolor films, gardens. It's just so my vibe. And let's see when this one was originally published as well. 1990. So it seems so up my alley, like a really good summer read. And I've been finding more and more books lately that are way more my vibe and I'm finding more and more of what I like. And for me, it's a lot of like surrealist pieces um so i'm really excited for this one what an interesting find i don't know if this one is actually translated or not let's take a peek it doesn't look like it is dog eaters i'm really excited for that one so those are the two books that i got while i was out today which is perfect i don't need a ton of books but like so my vibe in two completely different ways let me quickly talk to you all because i did finish crisis girls it's so cute it's so cute um i forgot to mention too this is translated by ben robert trethaway the main character is katie k-a-e-d-e -E. i'm not sure how that's pronounced necessarily but 
She is like 10 years old and she can raise zombies from the dead. And she lives in Tokyo, but they call it the crisis city and big giant monsters just come out all the time. So she's like always on call to go fight them. She's very naive and doesn't quite know like the best way to attack these monsters and to like save people. Like her priorities are really all over the place, but crisis girls are these special group of girls whose like blood has descended from like criminals um and they are sent to like these institutions to learn how to like use their powers for good because they're so powerful they could be for evil um so they save the city and there's all these like different characters and villains that are really funny like a giant killing penguin and a yippie chihuahua that is you know trying to kill a bunch of people and she has to go and save them and she also has a caretaker who is really sweet to her and tries to t like teach her right from wrong and then she, at the very end of this book, meets another crisis girl and she doesn't really get along with her. So there's only one other book in the series and I would love to find it and read it because it's just so cute and it seems like in the next one, she's gonna meet another crisis girl. So really loved it. It was so fun and cute and like a perfect read for my birthday, like really lighthearted and entertaining and just really adorable, so. I liked this one a lot. That's my birthday so far and I'm just loving it. It's chill, it's relaxing. freaking snowing. It's snowing right now. And right before I started filming this, I burnt the actual crap out of my tongue on this coffee. I just like took the biggest gulp and then literally just spittled it out. <laughs> so good morning. <laughs> it is like really, really snowing out. And yesterday was so nice. And now it's snowing. Gotta love April. 
but it is currently Monday. It's Monday the 17th and yesterday was so lovely. Also the mullet game is really strong today. I've been getting in the habit of falling asleep with wet hair to get it more voluminous and mullet game very very strong today. If you hear a lot of street traffic right now it's because it is snowing and I am on a high traffic street and when it's slushy out everything is loud. Everything is loud. I can't control it. So I apologize. But anyway, yesterday was so nice. My family and I got together to celebrate my mom's and my birthday because we're a few days apart. And we had pizza and they got me a vegan cheesecake, feeling really grateful. And then we drove to the lake shore and we went hiking to the beach. It was so cold. It was cold. I was a little grumpy and miserable because it was so, so cold, but it was a lot of fun. I love going to the beach when it's cold out and when there's like no one there. And it was just so lovely. It was really, really nice. And then we came home and then I had a photo session that evening. Um, which I didn't get any footage of, but it was awesome. It was an awesome photo session in the woods at sunset right before all this shitty snow happened. So like it was like really divine. Also had a really great birthday because I haven't like chatted with you all um, when that ended, but my partner and I went to go see Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yo, the best movie. I don't even want to call it a movie. It's like a full experience I have ever experienced <laughs> in my life. Um, I laughed so hard. I was crying. I, I experienced a full-blown existential crisis when we left the theater. I felt like I was in a completely different dimension. Everything felt really weird to me and fake and bizarre. Like everything felt 2D almost. Like I felt tipsy when I left and it really impacted me and made me question absolutely everything. Um, and I loved it for that. It was just an amazing experience. I can't wait to see it again. I frick i loved it so much it was my favorite thing ever so it was a great birthday a few little updates before i let you go and hopefully have some more montages of either snow or whatever today brings um i am still not done with the idiot i feel like i'm so close but i'm really losing steam i don't have much more to go i'm on page 331 now and i have like 80 pages left 90 pages left and I've only been reading it before bed since my birthday, which I mean, it's only been one day, so that's fine. Uh, I would love to like, you know, read it during daylight hours and maybe that will keep my attention. But while I'm reading it at night, I'm just like, I don't know, I'm starting to lose steam. It feels a little like too long. The part where we're at where our main character, Celine, is in Hungary and she's experiencing all these new things and there's all these new characters and like, yeah, it's interesting. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like getting a little bored with it. And I'm like, I liked the Harvard atmosphere. I want to go back to Harvard. I want to like kind of go back to the whimsy, but everything is new to Celine right now. And it almost like the writing style feels like it's changed a tiny bit. It's like throughout the whole book, it's very observational writing. It's just everything Celine sees and does and how she interacts with the world. But right now it's just a lot of like other people because she doesn't really have a whole lot of opinion. And maybe that is because everything's so new to her and she's just soaking it all up. But I'm just like not vibing with it as much as I did at the beginning. And that's like kind of sad for me. So we shall see. Anyway, we're gonna hop into some editing. And then on the roster for today, I might be getting lunch with a friend. And then I do have my yoga class later tonight. So that's about it. Hoping I can get some reading in. And then this week is just gonna feel super bizarre for me because I don't have my part-time job. I gotta like, just like keep myself accountable and still get work done and still do things. But now I have more free time to read and to do fun things like grabbing lunch with friends. And I'm just so happy about it. Like now I have time to actually be social and hang out with people and that's amazing. Before I'd be like, oh, I really would love to, but like Mondays and Tuesdays are my days to like get caught up on my own work. So like I would always avoid making plans, basically ever. But now I, I'm saying yes to all these hangouts and every single day this week, I'm hanging out with a friend every single day. And it's just amazing to me unheard of for me. <laughs> so yeah, that is my check-in friends. I hope you all are doing really well and I will chat with you all soon.
<laughs> full body enthusiasm. I did it. I finished The Idiot. It's very late and I need to go to sleep, but I finished The Idiot. I, oh, poor Winnie. He's just so tired. I did it. I finished The Idiot. Finally, I did it. I think I want to reserve most thoughts for like a wrap up because I'm not sure how this is going to linger with me. The ending felt pretty abrupt and odd, but what I will say, last I checked in with you all, I think I was telling you, like, you know, the last, like, I don't know, maybe third of the book was just feeling, or maybe fourth, was feeling really sluggish for me, especially when Celine was in Hungary. It was so observational of, like, who she was interacting with, and I think I still stand by my comments on it that it lacks Celine's voice in the that last chunk because she's so observational and is so thrown out of her element already for her being in Harvard it's like a new environment it's a new atmosphere she's meeting a lot of new people but there's some sort of like tether to who Celine is and the dry humor which I freaking love this book has made me laugh out loud so many times I'm just sitting here like chuckling to myself it is so smart and so funny. So the last little bit felt like it was dragging on. It felt like the book should have ended before she left for Hungary. And then in comes a character that saves my whole last chunk reading experience. She meets a character in Hungary. I, Rosa. I was gonna say her name is Rose, but it's Rosa, I think. I'm pretty positive it's Rosa. And she saved my reading experience in the last little bit so she is such an amazing character so memorable so funny feels like a real person i think that's what's so well done about this book is that every character feels so real and bizarre and quirky it's almost like the dialogue is very like gilmore girls ask where it's like wow this is like very intellectual and witty and observant do people really talk like this but this book made it feel like people do talk and think like this and i just really liked it you know celine the, our main character is just like so steadfast in her ways but we're not ever really given like background as to like why she is the way she is she's very dry very um against certain things uh it has a lot of like built up biased opinions but we don't know why <laughs> and I just found it so interesting like we're just like thrown right into the middle of everything and into Celine's brain and I really enjoyed it but Rosa definitely saved the last little bit for me and made it much more enjoyable as soon as she entered as a character in Hungary yeah we shall see how like the actual ending of this book sticks with me though so that is that I finished a I finished two books in this reading vlog Thank goodness. I think I'm a grand total of like five or six books behind on my Goodreads challenge, which is fine. I'm sure I can either catch up or who gives a hoot about numbers anyway, but I would love to find a new audiobook. I would love to find some books that I just like fall in love with and read much faster than this one. <laughs> But I still really enjoyed it, even though it did take me longer than normal to get through. And that's totally fine. We just, reading is enjoyable. It's for pleasure. It's not a contest. It's not a race. I just have to remind myself of that. But I read it. Thank you all so incredibly much for being here and for hanging out with me on my birthday and this new journey in my life of being full-time self-employed and what that brings. It's honestly just so amazing to have you all here with me on this journey and like, all this growth and it's just amazing and I just like really genuinely appreciate you so incredibly much and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning day night whatever time it may be where you are and I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video which will be very soon I do promise that so stay cozy my friends bye